Hey there, this is Christina Marassi and I am coming to you live from the big island of Hawaii. It's so nice to be back with you all. I haven't done a Facebook Live in a while. And I noticed I was feeling a little bit nervous. There's so much going on in the world right now. And so it's a lot to kind of just drop in and start to feel into what to share. So uh, I don't have this all figured out. I tried to take some notes and I just couldn't even get it all together. So I'm just going to start and begin talking. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the dark feminine today. So I'm super fascinated by this topic at the moment because my work is all about helping women to bring their feminine power into business as a pleasure CEO. And recently I got to do a three day immersion with my six month clients. Uh, they're called the pleasure CEO priestesses. And it was all about the dark feminine. So three days, we dove in and we spent time there and it was beyond powerful. It was probably one of the most powerful experiences of my life and for all of my clients involved as well. And, you know, with this work that I'm downloading around the feminine operating system in business, I don't have this all figured out. I mean, I'm not sure there's any one woman who totally knows how to do business from their feminine side because business is so inherently based on masculine values. So to figure out how our unique design wants to run in business is a whole different language is all I have to say. So I'm still figuring out a lot about this and kind of downloading it as we go. So I knew that this uh, second, there's three immersions in the six month program, that the second one wanted to be all about the dark feminine because that's a place that most of us as people don't allow ourselves to go and in while this uh, video is about the dark feminine it's just as important for men as well because as women we have an inner masculine and an inner feminine and as men have an inner masculine and an inner feminine and of course we're talking about the archetypal energies you hear the roosters in the background <laughs> talking about archetypal energies of feminine and masculine and not just men and women. So we're going to dive into this topic today because clearly it is such an intense time. I mean, it feels like every day a new tragedy hits, a new uh, natural disaster, an act of God, sexual harassment, racism. I mean, it just keeps going on and on. So I see a lot of people joining in. Welcome. We're sending, sending you some aloha from the big island of Hawaii in Kona. And if you want to say hi and where you are signing in from, I'd love to get to know who's coming on. So, so the dark feminine. I did this three day immersion with my clients recently and we went to lots of dark, interesting places. And I came out seriously with this understanding of, I think the dark feminine might be the answer to everything. <laughs> And that is a bold statement, but I want to break it down for you why I think this is important. And then, of course, I'm so fascinated about how to bring all of this into business and what it means for those of us having mission based businesses and moving our work out into the world and how we create sustainable success that benefits everyone. Right. OK, so dark feminine. Let's talk about what does that even mean? So for me, that's where we allow ourselves to go into the darker side of life into the shadow, into our heavier emotions. We all know when that place hits. Uh, I've studied with an organization called One Taste who share about orgasmic meditation and they would call this place the down. And I kind of like that phrase because we know when the kind of the crankiness hits, the annoyance hits, and then we start to feel a little bit uh, just heavy and maybe some depression comes in and we're going into the down. Now I've also worked with a woman named Mama Gina and she likes to call it the swamp. So I want you to kind of get an idea of what we're talking about here. We're going down into the dark. We're going down into the swamp. But here's the interesting thing. Both of these bodies of work and then everything I've studied as well, believe that almost all of our power is there. And this is a very, very interesting thing to consider because so many of us want to stay in the light and make sure everything feels lovely and wonderful and sunshine and butterflies. But the real work to me is when you're willing to go into the dark, when you can face your pain, when you can sit in uncomfortable situations and you can pick up the power that lives there. And this is when we start to become unstoppable with what we're here to do in the world. Because here's the why I think it's the answer to everything. So many of us, like I said, are really only more interested in things that make us feel good and what's going on in your life and how, how, how are things? Oh, they're good. 
And this energy that kind of keeps us up and we think it's in the light, but really what we're doing is avoiding the dark and the shadow. And for those of you who have done a lot of personal development work, you know that the shadow is where it's at, right? Like we all had experiences as kids where we got shamed around something, um, some sort of aspect of ourselves. So we tossed it over our shoulder, shoved it in the closet, thinking, no, I will never be that again. And no one's going to ever know that I have this aspect of myself. But it's kind of like this closet that we're sort of carrying in a bag over our shoulder. And guess what? Everybody else can see that damn thing in your shadow but you. Because <laughs> you've turned your back on it, you've disowned it, but really it's still back there and the whole world can see the damn thing. And so we're often acting out of that unconsciousness that's in the shadow. And so really the work needs to happen now with everything that's happening in the world is we got to turn around and we got to face that shadow and we got to pick up that power and see how we can become more whole as we move forward. So until you own your dark feminine who has the intenser sides of life of the rage and the grief and the depression and the shame, then you can't own your full spectrum and all of your power. You're only owning half of it. And this is what I believe has to change. I got a heart, thank you. If anyone else wants to chime in with this topic too, of like, is this resonating for you? Do you have something you wanna add in? Can you feel the dark feminine at work with everything that's happening in our culture right now? Ariana says, yes, 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 honor the dark, love the shadow, and become whole. So perfectly put, my sister. Thank you. And we're seeing this with all the intensity that's happening in our world right now. It's like we're kind of being shoved into the dark. And, and while uh, it's not exactly a pleasant process, I mean, my heart goes out to all of the people who are so deeply impacted at the moment with Puerto Rico and Houston and... Florida and I mean it just goes on and on obviously with Vegas with the Northern California where I lived in the last three years um, and then with the sexual harassment cases that are coming up and then obviously the ongoing racism that's been going on since the beginning of time as well so we're being taken into the dark and I'd like to believe that's because we're looking to become more whole so this is a time to all be brave. This is a time to go into those darker shadows and pick up the power that we need that lives there. So why is the dark feminine the answer to everything? Well, I shared a little bit earlier that I believe until you own your dark feminine, you do not own all your power. There's no way. You have to understand your full spectrum. You know, and I love the way um, a woman named Regina Thomas-Shower talks about this. She says that as humans and as women, like the feminine side of things, we have a lot of emotions. And she says we really have enough emotions to fit 88 keys on the piano. But unfortunately, most of us are just playing a few keys like we're playing chopsticks in the middle of this whole keyboard. But really we need to understand how to embrace the whole keyboard of all of our range of emotions. So when we do we become so powerful and we aren't afraid to go into the dark so it's a whole different way of looking at it the way that i work with my clients is oh i got some hearts thank you the way i work with my pleasure ceo clients is it's like when the dark comes you dive in there's nothing else to do but get into approval of it embrace it make it right and go into the dark and i will even say to them you know what go pick up the penny at the bottom of the pool because that's the power. The dark feminine is taking you into those dark spaces so that you can finally own her. She's taking you into the mystery. She's taking you into the destruction and into the rebirth so that you can create anew. And I personally believe that this totally has applications in our business because if we keep doing business the way we've always done it, and all of us can feel that it's changing, we will not grow. And if we don't willingly go into the dark with a dark feminine as she beckons to us and seduces us to go there, guess what? She will push our noses into it and take us there unwillingly. So we get to decide if we want to go in willingly or not. And so it's in that place of going into the dark and allowing the destruction. And it's the great place of this goddess, the Hindu goddess Kalima. 
Kali is all about death and destruction and she is black and she carries a severed head and there's blood just dripping off of her with a sword. And so she is about the dark, but it's not in a negative way. It really is more about in order to create a new, we have to have things die first. And she is willing to destroy all that is not truth and all that is not love. And I just read this fucking great article. It was actually written in December, but it said, um, how was it put? It was like something like Kali has taken over the United States. I mean, like she has us in her grips with all that's going on presidentially, politically, and everything that's happening. So she's calling to us. She's beckoning to us to go into the dark. And I had uh, another amazing teacher named Michael Brabant say to me recently, he said, reality is your tantric consort here to open you wider. And that is something that has really stayed with me. So it's a question of how can we see these times, all this intensity that's happening right now. But I don't want to make light of what so many people are going through and I've been deeply affected in my own way too. But how can we see it all as perfect? How can we see reality is here as our tantric consort to open us wider? How can we see it all as sacred? And this is the message of the dark feminine. She wants us to see the full spectrum, all range as 100% sacred and perfect. And when we own that, when we can find the pleasure in seeing everything as sacred, then we transcend. But it's not until we embrace the dark sides, and it's not until we can see reality as our tantric consort here to open us wider, that we can truly step into our full power. So, I wanted to share some of these pieces and I also want to open up a dialogue like what else do you want to share around the dark feminine? What are you learning from these times? Do you have any questions? Um, as I mentioned, I finished this three day immersion with my pleasure CEO priestess's clients where we went into three days of the dark feminine and it was beyond. I mean, we all came out incredibly changed and heading into it. There were a few people who weren't entirely on board. Lots of my clients were into it, but there was one woman that was like, now explain to me again why we have to go into the dark feminine. But it was a fabulous question. I was so glad she asked and it took me like, it gave me an opportunity to sit down and be like, how do I answer this question? And I ended up going back over like 20 years of studies over the healing arts to answer her from all these different modalities and traditions. And by the end she got it. And she was one of the ones who had like the most transformation in the group and uh, it's been incredible to see. So Renee Henderson says, I saw a post today that said, before your beauty can come from the ashes, you have to first burn some shit down. And Stacy Jordan Shelton said that. It's true. It's true. There's something that's happening. There's a purging that's happening. This, this incredible movement around the hashtag me too. I mean, how amazing for all of these women to step forward and raise their hand and make it transparent what is happening in our world. And there's something powerful about the art of transparency because I don't believe anything can fully start to transform or change until that transparency step is taken. Because we can't heal everything on our own inside. It's in the sharing of it with someone special or perhaps with our sisters and them witnessing us and receiving us that it starts to shift and change. So we're starting to see that things can change like that. I mean, this movement happened over the course of the last three days, happened over the course of the last 10 days with the Harvey Weinstein scandal. So we have so much power at our disposal right now and notice that many or much of it is coming from going into the dark, going into the down to pick up our power. So I just wanted to like start this conversation because to me, you know, it's not fun to sit in the uncomfortability of rage and grief and all kinds of loss and intensity. But we need to learn how to sit in those high sensations of those deep emotions. 
because here's what I've also been learning too, is when I have some of those deeper emotions like grief and rage and, and shame, I take it out of the brain and I even take me out of the emotional state and I come into the body and I sit at the sensation level of what it feels like in my body. And it's a very different experience at that point. It's still not entirely pleasant because it's a very high sensation going on in my body, but it takes so many layers out of it and it almost takes me back to my animal body. And that's a somewhat easier place to sit with it. And then I've been working with my clients where we really practice instead of trying to expel that power or that energy, we fold it back in. Like we're kneading dough and we really sit with that sensation and see, can we allow it to be pure energy and pure feeling state? Can we allow it to just be a sensation? In which case it could be painful, it could be pleasurable, and we get to decide. So this is what I've been learning is that my willingness to go into the dark and be with the dark feminine and her intense emotions of grief and rage and shame, that it gives me an ability to be in agreement and an approval of these places. And it gives me the freedom to pick up that power. And it shows me how to find pleasure in everything and to find everything as sacred and to really see reality as my tantric consort. So these are some deeper topics. If anyone wants to chime in with what they're learning or something else to add in or ask a question, please feel free. And then I'll spend the last few minutes talking about, so what does this mean in business? Okay, wait, Ariana says, the dominator culture has devalued the feminine and especially the dark feminine, yes. We heal as we change our stories. We can speak up and speak out. And as we do, the stories change, yes. As we embrace this intensity, I think there's more coming. Yes, there's this place of the transparency being really important. And, and it's so important for us to get into agreement with what's happening because so much of what's in the shadow is because we're not willing to look at it, right? But if we can allow it to be okay and be with what is and allow its rightness and its isness, then that's when it actually can start to shift and change. So it's an important part of the process. And yes, you know, we do live in a patriarchal culture. I've been calling it the patriarchal operating system that was all automatically installed into our hard drives. And really, we have no idea how much it impacts us. And even us women, like nobody benefits from the patriarchy, by the way. Men don't benefit, nor do women. And as women, we're running the complete wrong like operating system that's based on masculine values that isn't even our unique design. And so to try and run our businesses from that place is just a wrong, so, so wrong. And that's why we see so many women entrepreneurs, their businesses aren't exactly sustainable. They're on the verge of adrenal burnout and fatigue and so much happening because we're using the wrong fuel and the wrong operating system. So I've been saying we need to like unplug the patriarchal operating system and begin to kickstart the feminine operating system. And it looks different. It's a whole different like programming language of uh, based on like pleasure and desire and turn on and mystery and all of these different pieces that will invite you to run your business in a completely, completely different way. But it takes a little bit of doing to get there. You don't just jump right from the patriarchal operating system right to the feminine, which I can, I'm a testament to. I thought that I could, but I got incredibly dismantled in the process of going from one to the other. So now I'm super passionate about helping anyone else who feels called to get into their right alignment with their feminine operating system of like, how can I make this an easier process for you? So I'm just going to briefly mention too that I do have a three day retreat coming up that's happening November 30th through December 2nd, and it's called the Pleasure CEO Live Retreat. And you can find out details at PleasureCEOLive.com. I'll put the link around here somewhere too, but it's just PleasureCEOLive.com. And why I'm excited about this is that I really want to gather the sisters to figure out what is this feminine operating system and then how in the world do we use it in business? Because there isn't any one woman on this planet that has this figured out yet. It is so different and so unique and we're learning a new language together. But I keep saying like, 
we need to open source this shit because I want to know what you're learning and I want to share what I'm learning and then I want us to create a language so that at some point this becomes a tipping point and it becomes more of the norm and we can have access to the feminine operating system in business. And I know so many of us are spending lots of time like really diving into our feminine and joining all of these women's groups and that's fantastic, I've done the same, but I find that it's easier to be in the feminine when I'm in those containers and then I go back home and I end up defaulting back into man mode and into my masculine and especially in business, even though I know better. But it's because we're hardwired to this patriarchal operating system. We've all also even internalized an inner patriarch. Like, you know that voice that gives you a hard time when you're not doing enough or you're not doing it right or you need to be doing more? That's your inner patriarch where you've internalized it inside. And we have got to dismantle that shit. So anyways, this event is coming up and interestingly, the venue is in Sonoma, which is a fascinating, has been a fascinating journey over the last week. So Sonoma is in Northern California in wine country, literally where all the fires are. So all of last week, and obviously I had friends who were impacted by the fires at an entrepreneurial friend who entire house, beautiful home was burnt to the ground. And then I was in the unknown as well of like, do I even have a venue for this event? And I trusted, I knew it would all be fine. If I didn't, there would be other options, but I couldn't promote last week. I just couldn't. I had to allow myself to feel and to be in the dark feminine and to be in the down and to be in the mystery. I mean, my early bird tickets were supposed to end last week and I just let it all go because I, I went inside, my feminine operating system was like, you are not allowed to promote women. You cannot put on a happy face or do any Facebook lives or even put on any makeup. No, no, no. You're going to feel and you're going to go inside. Thank you for that heart. And it was a powerful experience. I had to let go and trust that everything was going to work out fine. And then it felt like on Monday I could regroup and be like, okay, now what do I do with this? Thankfully I heard back that the venue is fine and I thought, okay, great. We're going to do 10% of ticket sales. They're going to go to the fire victims. Let's like just put it right there. And meanwhile, I didn't even choose to go to wine country for this event. I looked for three months. I had a professional help me. For some reason, there was no flow in the San Francisco or Oakland area, which is where I wanted to have the event. And the flow happened to be in Sonoma. And so it only landed about a month or two ago. And so the goddess is up to something with this, that she has us doing this event there. I mean, all I can think is maybe we get to bring the feminine and pleasure into that place of scorched earth and begin to start to shift some of this story. So if any of you are feeling called to embrace more of your feminine power, to kickstart your feminine operating system, and to really revolutionize the way you do business, please consider joining us at the Pleasure CEO Live Retreat. Um, you can find out details at pleasureceolive.com. And uh, there'll be amazing women there. It'll be deep as fuck if I may say. It'll also be super fun and super juicy and super sexy, but we're gonna go into that full range. The dark feminine will be well represented and we're gonna have to look to see how can we be in our full spectrum of emotions? How can we destroy things as we're recreating anew and innovating in our businesses? And how can we gather in sisterhood as well? Because we cannot do this alone. I know so many of us are embracing our feminine power, but it's kind of like one by one by one. And then we're all in our own little nook, like thinking we're absolutely crazy. But really, we need to realize we're not doing it all alone. And we need to learn from each other in that process. So I'm super, super passionate about this. And it feels really, really, really important. And I'll finish with this. If anyone wants to chime in about their thoughts about the dark feminine or what they're learning about business or ask any questions, please do. Let's see, is there anything else to share about how this shows up in business? Let's go there for a second. Okay, so how the dark feminine shows up in business. Well, first of all, she shows us that everything is sacred and we learn how to follow a flow. So last week, for example, I knew that there was a an interesting way of perfection of, ah, Daniel Hanneman, nice to have you here. Great to see you doing this for women. Thank you, my brother. I appreciate that. So last week, the dark feminine told me, you go inside, you go into the down willingly, and you sit and you feel, and that is it. Breathing and trusting only. 
And so that shifted. In the past, I might have continued with promotional machine moving forward, but I couldn't. It wasn't in alignment. And I'll tell you what, I didn't do any kinds of promotion and I still sold some tickets. Not a ton. I'm not going to say there was like a, you know, <clears throat> a whole like rush of them, but tickets were sold and I wasn't doing anything but honoring my own flow. And then the divine feminine is in, uh, sorry, the dark feminine in business is going to show you that you really have to be okay with the full spectrum. And when you are, that's when you're in your full power. So you're going to be uncomfortable. You're going to be comfortable in uncomfortable situations as well. For those of you who are facilitators, you've been at events where it takes a little bit of a turn and things get a little bit gnarly in the room. And if you are intimate with your dark feminine, you can sit in that and you can allow the truth of whatever is there to come to the surface rather than squash it, rather than move on and avoid it, rather than try and turn it into spiritual bypassing and sunshine and light. I've had some interesting experiences as of late at my recent events where some intensity showed up in the room and it was beautiful in the end, but I had to be able to sit in that uncomfortability and the dark feminine showed me how to do that. There's so many other pieces as well, but I'll leave it at that and let your imagination figure out how also the dark feminine shows up in business. But the last thing I want to share is there is a story that One Taste would tell, and it's an organization that uh, shares about orgasmic meditation, and I did their coaching program, and I did love this story. They would say that there was a, the temple of Ephesus in ancient times, and it was a temple of high priestesses, and they were using their sensuality as their sacred prayer, if you will. And they would tell the story that the men would come back from war, and these temple priestesses would fuck the war out of them and send them back out as love. So there's something super edgy, risque, and powerful about that. And there's this place where we use our sensuality and we use our sex power like in divination with connection to the divine. And in that place, we can transmute the darker energies. And I'll tell you, I love this story, but it always felt a little bit like a story. But recently with this work with my clients, the pleasure CEO priestesses, and you know, I was thinking about this. I didn't originally name the program pleasure CEO priestesses. I had this whole other name that just did not stick in the slightest. And so then I finally was like, it needs a name. I ended up, I invited, enrolled people into the program with no name, <laughs> by the way, this is how the feminine works in business. It was quite hilarious at the last event. And so as I listened, I was, that was one of the options, Pleasure CEO Priestesses, and I was like, eh, it's all right. I mean, I even, I had a little bit of an eye roll because there's so much priestess talk out there these days, but it was the best I had. So I went with it and just like over halfway through the program of six months, I finally am getting, I'm like, oh shit, this is, this is real deal stuff. Like we are high priestesses doing this work and I got that my clients and I are training and we don't even totally know how yet, but we are training to be those temple priestesses to take in the darkness and know how to transmute it back out as love. Now I don't have that all figured out yet, but I can feel the goddess guiding me and that is exciting. And that's, I was just like, oh shit, this is real deal. So it's not just a nice story anymore. This is what we need to learn. And then you see all the intensity that's happening in our culture right now. I wish I knew how to do it right now because I would be sucking up all that darkness and looking for ways to transmute it into power and into light and not spiritual bypass. Oh, no, no, no. We're talking about true alchemy here. But learning how to take something that's stuck in the darkness and turn it back into pure potency. So. This is what I'm up to, and I know many of you are up to amazing work as well. If you feel called to be a part of this Pleasure CEO movement, please consider joining the Pleasure CEO live retreat happening in Sonoma, in wine country, smack dab in the middle of where the fires have been happening, although the venue is fine, 10% of ticket sales are going to fire victims, and I'd love to have you, because I can't do this alone. Danielle says, yes, you are right, high priestesses for sure. Thank you. Thank you for recognizing this. Jamie says, I've never heard of the dark feminine. What is it? 
I shared a lot about that in the beginning of the video, but I'll share a little bit more now as we're finishing. So for me, the dark feminine is the darker side of life. You know, if you can think of a, a spectrum where on one end of the spectrum we have light and happy, and the other end of the spectrum we have dark and maybe sad and intense. And as a culture, we're not comfortable with the dark side of the spectrum. We want to move away from it, we toss it in the shadow, we deny it exists, and we just plant ourselves on the light end of the spectrum. But it doesn't work. It means we're like kind of uh, handicapped and only have one side of us. So the dark feminine is about really embracing many of the many of the powerful attributes of the feminine. So first of all, the feminine in its natural state is dark. She is the yin quality of going inward. It's like a very cave-like experience. And the masculine, we're talking archetypes here, right? We're not talking men and women. The masculine archetype is called yang, and it's very much out into the world and filled with light. So feminine is naturally yin. It's a darkness. It's a cave. She's the mystery. She's the void from which all things come. If you think of a womb, it's in the dark, but it's gestating. It's creating from nothing and bringing something into the world. So the dark feminine is really about embracing these attributes of the feminine that our culture does not teach us to embrace. There's a beauty to our grief. There's a beauty to our rage. There is so much power in those darker emotions, but we generally don't allow ourselves to feel them and we squash them and we repress them. And the power that's there gets lost. And I got a thumbs up. Thank you. So, thank you, thank you. So, we need to go into the down, and I talked about this earlier, we need to go into the down, into the darker emotions in order to pick up that power so that we can become more whole. And it's going against all of our conditioning, you know, like we're taught as a culture to like, I don't want to be in pain, I'm going to move away from it. <clears throat> but really, we need to dive into the pain, and we need to see it all as perfect and as sacred. And the dark feminine shows us that. We can embrace the sides of us that are angry and bitchy. And it's not that we're going to hang out there all the time, but if we suppress those aspects, then we don't have access to that power. And there's a, like that power, if we suppress it, actually kind of festers and gets a little bit gross and does far more damage than if we allowed it to fully move through us. If we had a little bit of a bitchy rage moment and we just let it move through us and we put it into our body and expressed it, more than likely power would come from that and it would raise up everyone. But instead, we decide that's not a good thing and we squash it down. So, Jamie says that's pretty profound. Oh, awesome. I'm glad that's uh, working for you. My mother just joined. Hello, Linda. <laughs> so, any other questions about the dark feminine before we finish up? Sorry, mom, you can go back and watch the replay. Uh, I guess it's a powerful time and Kim says, totally agree. I had to have fibroids removed due to this anger squashed down. Yes. First of all, I'm so sorry that that happened for you. But at the same time, it's so important for us to be using our body in this whole experience. Daniel says, shadow work is so important right now. I'm glad to see you were doing this for women. Totally vital right now. Jamie says, I totally squash it though. I understand. Okay, great. So let's talk about that then. So how do we not squash it? So here is a couple of possibilities, and I, I talked about this earlier in the video too. One possibility is when you're having those big emotions, is you sit and you feel in your body on a sensation level. Because so often our head's got all kinds of layers on whatever we're feeling, then the feeling state has all kinds of layers on it. But if you bring it home to the body and the sensation level, which is very value neutral language, like do you feel a tightness, a constriction, a warmth, a, a electricity, a buzzing, very value neutral. Then you get to be with your body because guess what? Your body speaks to you in the language of sensation. That's how it's talking to you. Your body is telling you what you need by how it feels. And unfortunately, our culture has taught us to be completely disconnected from our bodies and the conversation it's trying to have with us. So one thing is when you feel those big emotions is to sit in the sensation of it. 
and see uh, I was saying I work with my clients we fold it back in rather than trying to expel or get rid of a high sensation of say grief or rage we fold it back in and we feel it and we sit in it and we just allow it to be sensation in the body and that can start to help it another thing to do is to be in approval of it like don't make it wrong because when you make something wrong it actually gets squashed like we talked about or you know we know the phrase what you resist persists right so instead if you if you welcome it and you say thank you and i love you to the anger and the grief that will allow it to start to move and then a third practice that i could mention is to bring it into the body and move it so you can put on some uh some kind of rage filled type music like nine inch nails and just start like hitting pillows and punching out into and like you know drop kicking and all sorts of moving it through the body because that's a way like emotions are energy and emotion right so we need to find ways to let it move and when we squash it down we stop that movement and then that trauma kind of gets stuck in our system and it's bad news so you want to look for ways to move it as another option sitting in it is one great option but also moving it through the body and expressing it stomping on the ground yelling like let that rage be in your body in your like sanctuary and you take care of that charge that you're feeling and you don't have to share it with anybody else. It's your experience that's happening in your own body. So those are some possibilities. Does that help, Jamie? And any other questions or things to share before we finish up? I hope this has been useful. I'm so enamored with the dark feminine right now. Renee says, sometimes the only way out is through. <laughs> Another post you saw today. You saw some good posts today, Renee. It's true. Yes, we have to go in. Um, I, I shared earlier that I tell my clients like when you feel that down coming, you know, the rage or the grief or the darker emotions, even a little bit of a depression, you dive in. You go get the penny at the bottom of the pool. Imagine that there's a gift for you there inside the white hot searing heat of that pain. And you sit in it and you receive that gift and you see it all as sacred. And this is when we'll start to shift what's happening on our planet. Because there's so much more to share. I'll keep doing Facebook Lives, hopefully, if my feminine allows me to. But there's a place, too, where I believe that what's happening outside of us definitely has some resonance with what's happening inside of us. And so one way to be with all this intensity is to start to keep healing our own shadow. So that's where I'm putting a lot of my energy. If you want to join me, you can. Um, we're going to talk about healing our inner masculine as women soon. So thank you for being here with me in Hawaii. Ooh, it does look like it's about to rain very, very soon. I'm on the big island in Kona on this beautiful seven acre farm. And it's so fun to uh, get to share some aloha with you. So I'm sending you lots of love and look for ways to see if you can embrace your dark feminine, man and woman alike. How can you see the darker, more intense sides of life as absolute sacred beauty? And I shared earlier too that you can see reality as your tantric consort here to open you wider. How is life perfect exactly as it is? Because it's calling you forward to heal some of those layers so that we can step into our full truth and full power. So, so much love to you and I will see you soon. Take care.